CC Collider can be found under the Stylize category, and this is just a kaleidoscopic effect. If I apply it to my layer, it's going to be constrained to the bounds of the layer, so I'm actually going to just undo that and make a new adjustment layer and apply the effect to that instead. Now it'll extend the edges of my comp. And to show you exactly what this effect is doing, I'm going to just shut that off for a second and add in a solid composite effect on top of my logo so that it has a filled in white background now. So if I turn the adjustment layer back on and scale down my logo, eventually we're going to see the edges of that logo. So it's making a tile one quarter the size of this square basically, and then rotating and repeating it over and over throughout the rest of the comp. Now if I scale it down even further, and then move it up and to the left, and then find that right spot, you can see all of the individual tiles that it's creating. So let me make this darker so that we can see my logo a little bit easier. And now it's a little bit more obvious what's happening. It's taking that tile, repeating and mirroring it in different directions and offsetting it in different positions. If I scale this up and move it around, you can kind of see what's happening. Now generally this is an abstract effect, so you wouldn't want to be able to see the entirety of what you're applying it to, like my logo here, but I'm just trying to show you exactly how this effect is working. Let's walk through the controls, and once we understand how it's working, then we can make something a little bit more abstract. So first of all, we have the center, and this is just a point control. If I move it around, we can see it down here. This changes where the center point of that tile is, and it has a pretty drastic effect on how everything is being repeated. I'm going to undo that back to its default. Next we have size, and this is the size of the tile that's being repeated and manipulated. So the bigger that is, the more spread out these are going to be. I could now make my logo a little bit bigger and move it around, and those tiles will be much larger. Next up is mirroring, and it's set to flower by default. We have a lot of options here, and we're gonna take a look at that in a second. But first I wanna go through the other two controls, which is rotation. If I increase this value, you can see that that's rotating all of the different instances of that tile. And then finally we have floating center, which is just a checkbox. If I check that on and move the center point around, it's going to behave differently than if it was unchecked. You see with it unchecked, everything moves around symmetrically around this center point of the layer, but floating center means that that center point goes wherever this point is. It's no longer based on the center of that layer. All right, I'm gonna uncheck that, reset the center back to default, and now let's take a look at the mirroring types. And remember, my logo just looks like this inside of my comp. So with that on, it's flipping it around in lots of different directions. Let's go back to the first option, which is unfold. And this is going to produce a much less complicated looking tile. If I move my logo around, I can kind of make this perfect grid where every instance of the tile is mirrored or flipped. Next is wheel, and that's just going to change the orientation of some of the tiles and how it's all repeated. Then we have fish head, which is a really weird name. But if I were to just double click on the ellipse tool and make a perfect circle, so we'll say 200 by 200, and let's make that nice and white. I'll move that below the adjustment layer, turn off my logo for a second, and then shift this over. You can kind of see where this fish head name is coming from, I think. If you turn this 90 degrees, maybe this is a fish mouth and two fish eyes looking at you. That's the best theory I can come up with anyway. All right, let's take a look at the other options. Next up is can mees. This one really stumped me. I'm pretty sure this is short for measurement, but regardless of where I got the name, you can see how it changes things. And if I turn those circles back on, it's basically the same as fish head. It's just rotated 90 degrees. Next up is flip flop. So all of the tiles are oriented upside down and then every column is mirrored. Next is flower, which we've already taken a look at. After that is a dia cross, which again, I think that is short for diagonal. If I move my logo around, you can kind of see what's happening there. Then we have flipper. Again, if I shift my logo around to make this kind of a perfect grid, instead of the flip flop where the columns are mirrored, it's now these individual rows where every other row is rotated 180 degrees. And finally, we have starlish. This one is very unique. I'll shift my logo around again, and you can see that this has many more instances of that tile, and it's pushing it out in an octagon pattern, where there are eight sides, and there are actually two instances of each tile on every side, so we have 16 copies for every repetition. And if I scale my logo up, we can make something much more abstract this way, with lots of interesting shapes, and this is where you can just really play around and see what you can come up with, because now that I have this very abstract pattern, I could say rotate the tiles to have this animated kaleidoscopic effect. 
And I could combine that with moving around the center of the tile, maybe turn on floating center, and very easily create some interesting repeating patterns. But those are all the controls for CC Collider. Be sure to check through all of those different options and see how it affects your results. It's a really fun effect to play around with and can create some very intricate looking patterns. But that's all you need to know about CC Collider. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.